Hey, welcome back to Driver 88. I hope you're all well. Believe it or not, Aussies are finally starting to buy EVs. Last month, 8% of all new cars sold in Australia were electric and 15% in total were hybrid or EV together. And pushing EV sales this year is this, the new Cupra Born. It's gonna be taking the fight to the base Model 3 Tesla and the Nissan Leaf E Plus. And I think it's gonna sell many units. So after looking at all the brochures and marketing for Cupra, I can tell you that this car is so exciting and so, amaz so amazing that it just makes you want to basically convert, uh, contract and move your body in all sorts of ways. I've never seen so much interpretive dance across websites and brochures. Interpretive dance inside, outside, people half naked interpretive dancing. I just feel like I'm gonna do backflips when I look at this Cupra Born and wanna rip my shirt off and yeah, put my head uh, behind my legs, etc. Now I'm sure you can look in the brochure yourself, but let's just run through some numbers quickly. First up, we're talking about $65,000, which is slightly less than the Tesla and a bit more than the Nissan Leaf. Boot space, I think is really gonna be important with this car. You can fit quite a few bags as well as a large suitcase. I've noticed with say the uh, EV6 Hyundai, uh, Ionic 5. They've got really, really small boots, even though they're SUVs. This one, it's about the same size as my Cooper Leon, which is good. You're not leasing out on too much space here. Um, also, speaking of numbers, 511 kilometers of range, although the brochure says 475. Again, that is about exactly the same as a Model 3. So finally, some brands are catching up to Elon on those numbers. So I think one of the biggest selling points for the Cooper One is these looks. Uh, the front of the car, I really don't mind. It kind of looks like an angry Pokemon to me. The rest of the car looks pretty nondescript, but it does run on these enormous, for some reason, 20 inch wheels, which are a $2,600 option. Uh, the design is interesting, but at least it makes it a little bit more exciting than a Nissan Leaf or a Model 3, which looks like a computer mouse. So, there's a common problem with EVs and that is that the floor is really high and um, for people like me, I'm not even six foot, my head is completely touching the roof. I do have a long body though. I'm finding that this is an issue even in the larger SUVs. Uh, yeah, not that great. I mean, generally I've got a little bit of space. With this configuration, you've only got two seats at the back. This may be an issue for you, I'm not exactly sure. But these seats are relatively comfortable. Um, you just can't be too tall. There's a couple of options on the inside. You can have bucket seats. You can have uh, better audio. Uh, I kind of wouldn't really bother with either, to be honest. Um, the central screen is 12 inches. There's a really weird sort of thing here though. We don't have the wireless uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. I also, I'm not sure whether the ID3, which is essentially the Volkswagen version of this car, um, hasn't been released yet. I'm assuming that that's gonna be around pretty quickly. One thing is for sure that there won't be as many interpretive dances on that advertisement. Headroom in the front seat, however, is perfectly fine. Um, I'm a, always a big fan of Cooper steering wheels uh, from across all their models. Uh, these screens are relatively uh, clear. I like that this is turned towards you, which is unlike the Formentor and the Leon. Um, yeah, it's just a relatively nice place to be. I'm not a big fan of this material though. I kind of find it's kind of hot and heavy for some reason. I think I would prefer leather seats. These door bins, uh, not door bins, uh, central uh, bins are really large and great. You've got decent storage here. Two type C's at the front, two type C's at the back. That's pretty much it for the interior. I mean, it's a relatively nice place to be. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say. I do like the position of the gear selector though being right next to your steering wheel and you can basically be looking at uh, the road while you're changing into a um, drive or, or whatever it is. But yeah, very easy to maneuver and remember what you're doing. Let's talk about the range and the charging. So if you want a, a charging cable, you have to pay $700 extra for this guy. Um, also we've found that I think with everyday driving in your normal mode rather than your Cooper or performance mode, you definitely could get pretty close to 500 kilometers uh, driving this thing around. Uh, I think that's going to suit most people, I guess, in the cities and, and um, even in the suburbs, really. Uh, surely it's not going to suit everyone, which lots of people say because we're in this big country of Australia. But this is going to suit more people than any, I think, other definitely VW product ever has in the EV range. Right, so you're gonna meet Tom now. Uh, he's the man behind the camera. We're gonna take this thing for a drive. I'm gonna do a zero to 100 test and see how this thing goes. People have been saying that this is fun to drive. It is rear wheel drive, and that is quite a point of difference for uh, a lot of other electric cars. So I just have to try 
One more important thing. So we welcome Tom to the channel again, even though he owns half of it with me. Uh, he's been driving this Cooper Born for the last two days and he's told me in a message the other day that he's converted and now he likes electric cars apparently. Guys, we just lost another one. Another young kid has lost to the EV revolution, unfortunately. Um, but so far, we've been driving this car today. It's obviously very quiet and it is goddamn heavy. I mean, 1800 kilos for a hatchback. With my fat ass in the car, we're probably pushing near two tons. Um, zero to 100 is supposed to come up in seven seconds, which is a fair bit slower than the Model uh, 3, but a fair bit faster than the Nissan Leaf E+. One thing I have noticed is that it sits relatively stiff. You've got four different modes, your Cooper and Performance mode, your Comfort and your Individual. Um, yeah, it's 15 different or so settings for your suspension, which is great, just like my other Cupra that I own, um, which is, I guess, good for some of these, you know, bumpy pothole B roads and stuff. I've noticed a lot of people kind of looking at the car as we've been driving along. For certain angles, it looks just like a Golf, really. Um, and the ID3 that's uh, coming at some point is going to look even more nondescript than that. Um, but yeah, it's quite a nice place to sit. This kind of Alcantara stuff I'm not a big fan of. Usually Alcantara in sports cars I'm a fan of, but not so much in a car like this because you're probably gonna have potentially, maybe if you have young kids or, you know, you just every day you're jumping in and out of it, you're gonna be pushing dirt and spills and coffee and stuff into this uh, material, which is gonna be potentially a pain to get out. So I'm interested to see what you think. Basically every reviewer that I've seen has given this car an eight out of 10, which is relatively high praise. Um, EVs are finally, I think, ticking more box, boxes for more people. Um, and yeah, let me know if this would possibly be your first uh, EV consideration because apparently a thousand of these have already been sold um, and they're slowly getting delivered. Um, for myself, I'm not really going to be making the switch too quickly for my daily driver. I still love my Leon VZX. Um, I don't know if that's going to be something that maybe my partner will be looking at in future, but we're still probably a few years away. So after driving this for a, I guess a full weekend, uh, Tom, he drives a Q3 at the moment. Would you consider this as your first electric car, do you think? I would. I'm very impressed by how smooth it is and how much more comfortable it is in traffic. Yeah. Especially with these massage seats, they make it a lot better. But yeah, um, yeah I think electric car for a daily is the way to go and have something petrol for the weekend. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's gonna make sense for a lot more people. Um, certainly for some reason I too find EVs driving in traffic, especially bad traffic, a lot more relaxing than driving in a petrol car. And then if you can have a lot more exciting um, petrol car or ice car on your weekends or for track days etc as an enthusiast uh, that might be the way to go in future to quickly answer whether this car is fun to drive I would definitely say it is I mean for a multi-use hatchback it definitely handles corners quite well considering and it's got really really of course good responsiveness from say 20 kilometers to 80 kilometers per hour and for everyday use the turning circle is excellent really really I think important for a small hatchback that you're using every day has a really good turning circle and yeah really really competent in that regard